Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, when we gather together, the Bible lets us know that in God's presence there is what? Fullness of joy. There is a reason there is fullness of joy in God's presence. It's because the Holy Spirit is there. Praise God. Paul told us the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. Righteousness. So when you talk about the kingdom of God, you find the ability to do what? Righteousness. Then, it's easy for you to function in peace. Praise God. You don't struggle to have peace. Peace becomes a natural thing with you. And then, joy. Not just joy, because somebody is cracking jokes. He says joy in the Holy Ghost. So your joy is coming from a well that is within you. Praise God. So we're talking about where you don't need anybody to crack you up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You don't need any external force to crack you up. Right within you is your ability to produce joy in yourself. And that has nothing to do with what's going on outside. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. So whenever we gather like this, these are the things we expect. Joy must be in the midst of us. Hallelujah. And then, and then when we prayed, the first 45 minutes of our meeting, we spent time to pray. And the Lord gave us that instruction. And then the Lord gave us this promise that at that same hour of prayer, there is an angel that is going to be taking responsibility of things in your life. While we pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So miracles are taking place. And listen, if you came here with sickness, you can actually begin to check it. And you'll be amazed it is gone. When we gather and we begin to pray, burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed. It's not only after the message that the Spirit of God begins to move. He moves when we are gathered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the moment we come in here from 6 to 6.45, as we begin to pray, the presence of the Holy Spirit is here. There is an angel that is doing some work in your life. And because the Holy Spirit is here, we expect testimonies. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you this evening. Thank you for your spirit that is here. And Lord, our hearts are open to learn of you. Because you are here, we'll be guided into all truth. Because you are here, burdens shall be lifted, yokes shall be destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we have been talking, I've been sharing with you on the topic we call the people of prophecy. The people of prophecy. Praise God. I'm showing you right from the beginning. Now I want you to pay attention, especially the things I'm going to be sharing with you today. Because truly, your life will never remain the same. Hallelujah. So I'm sharing with you, we are a people of prophecy. We didn't just show up. We show up because there is a reason. I hear what I'm saying? And God spoke from the beginning before he made man. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So the intention of God, the mindset of God, the things in the depth of God's heart before he gathered the dust to form man was what? That man be in his image and after his likeness. Now, I've shared many things, you know, in that light to us. But today, I want us to go um, take it a step further as it regards to you today and where 
you are going. Praise God. Now, you know, the whole situation of the world, the world got out of course because of Adam and Eve. And even after Noah, and God, in Noah's day, God destroyed the earth with a flood. And he did that because of the wickedness that exists on the earth. Now, beyond men doing wickedness, God actually looked at the earth and says it was completely corrupt. Now, when he said corrupt, it didn't mean people were taking bribe. You get what I'm saying? When he said corrupt, he meant the nature of man itself have become corrupted. Are you listening to me? It has become corrupted. So man's nature itself, and you know the story that became as that came um, after angels came down and began to marry women, and they began to produce children. See, now that union began to produce new breed of beings on the earth that God did not create. You see that part? God did not create it. And that's why some things, some terminologies in the Bible, they are so important, even if you don't know how important they are. The Bible tells us that there is a book called the book of life. I hear what I'm saying. Because sometimes when you share things like this, people think, why would God be so wicked? You understand what I'm saying? Now, from the God, see, understand the Bible says the works we are finished from the foundation of the world. The works we are finished. Finished. Nothing can be added, nothing can be subtracted from it. So, God had a book from the foundation of the world. The book of life is not a book that is written as people are being born. No. The book of life is not written when people got born, get born again. No. You know, some people have that idea. When I get born again, your name is now written in the book of life. No, sir. The book of life has already been written. Complete. <laughs> Praise God. And the book of life was written before Adam was formed. You see that in scriptures. So now, because this book was written already, so I say, what do you mean? So do, does it mean that God knows the number of people that will be born in the earth? Yes, he knows. He knows he has a number. <laughs> Praise God. He does have a number. Now that's why it's at the end in the book of Revelation, at the end of everything that the book will be open. And when it is open, the instruction is very simple. Anyone whose name is not there, take him out because they were not supposed to be here in the first place praise God praise God so these angels came and they began to corrupt the human race and the children they began to give birth to they definitely they won't have their names in God's book and you get to what I'm saying because God had planned from Adam and Eve the children that are going to come into this world he had planned it now, because of that situation, God, because of the corruption that have taken place, God had to destroy everything. Now, God destroyed everything because the original seed, the people who, you know, it's like having your book. You know, it's like you're the principal of a school, or, okay? And in your register, you only have um, 300 pupils in your school. But then you come to school every day, you see a crowd. You get know what I'm saying? You come to school every day, you see a crowd like, ah, what's going on? They're all wearing uniform and, and, and going to class. Ah, wait, okay, hold on. Let's go to primary one. According to our registration, primary one people are supposed to be 50. And then you enter into a class. How many people are in your class? Oh, they are 75. 75? Where did they come from? Are you getting what I'm saying? So it became so overwhelming. God had to like, you know what, let me shut down this thing and he did because majority of the people that were on earth were not in his book so if God decides to start killing them one after the other the barrier will be too much so he decided to by one sweep he saved the ones are you getting what I'm saying now let me tell you the truth why did God have to end it in Noah's time because it was obvious if God had to wait for the next generation 
after Noah, he would have lost all of humanity. It, Noah was the only race that was still not corrupted. The ones he picked, Noah, his family, and the, the, the daughters that he picked right, for his sons, they were the only ones that were not corrupted. That's why I tell people, go read the scriptures carefully. Noah wasn't going around trying to save people to come into the ark. He wasn't. He was giving specific instruction from day one. You will build the ark. This is the specification of the ark. And God told him, these are the number of people that will be in the ark. So it's not like he went around, come, come and save yourself, come and save yourself. And go, ah, no, get out, get out. Of course he preached to them to repent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Noah preached to them to repent. So that peradventure God will postpone his judgment. But he didn't preach to them to come into the ark. Because there was no space for them. Are you listening to me? So he destroyed it. And the whole world was destroyed, saved Noah and his family. And then you will think, okay, fine and good. Everything is clean now. Let's start on a new slate. But the Bible says the same thing happened after that. <laughs> Praise God. After that it happened. What people don't realize is, see, because angels still come to the earth even today. You know, people think angels are robots. They just come, they don't have their own mind, they just come. God said we should come and do, they just finish it, we are going. Angels have free will. They do. So even till this day, angels still show up on earth and say, hey, hey, I think I like it here. <laughs> yes. And the moment they choose that, they lose their estate. They lose their place in heaven. Yes, they do. Because the moment they do that, they become corrupted. Because they are not supposed to dwell here. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? But then you remember God had told Noah that I'm not going to destroy the earth as I have done like this. And then he made a covenant of the rainbow. And so the rainbow comes out anytime a flood wants to, you know, come on the earth. Praise God. Now, here's where we're going. God chose a man called Abraham. And he called him out of his house, out of his hometown. And says, look, follow me. I will show you a place. And Abraham followed God. And God began to pronounce words of blessings in his life. And, and told him, oh, because you've obeyed my voice, I will bless you and I'll do this great thing. So God made Abraham a promise. Now that is one strong and solid foundation of our lives as Christians. We always refer to the blessing of Abraham, right? We always refer to the blessing of Abraham. Israel as a nation came forth because of Abraham. You know that, right? You know that, right? I always tell people this. Israel is proof that the Bible is real. Israel is proof that there was a man called Abraham. That's one nation that's so easy to trace their history. Now you get what I'm saying? You look into the Bible, you see where they all came from. You see there are 12 tribes, they all came from one man. And then you see those, those, those 12 tribes came from one man. And then that man came from another man. That man came from another man. And that's where their journey started as a nation. So the land they occupied now was the land that God told Abraham that I will give you this land. And so God made a promise to Abraham. Now, I mean, a lot of times people try to um, explain these things and they get, they, they get it all mixed up. Why I'm sharing this with us today is because remember, we are coming from somewhere. We didn't just show up. And if you don't know your history, you will not even understand how to function in it. So God said to Abraham, look, I will bless you. I will make you great. And God said something to him. He says, through you and through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Take note of that word. God said, through your seed, all the families of the earth. Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. Give me Genesis chapter 12 and verse 4. God began to speak to Abraham. Genesis 12. And verse 4. It says, So Abraham departed 
No, give me verse, verse, give, give me from verse 1. Let's start from verse 1 when God began to speak to him. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Go on. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be what? Blessed. Did you see that? God said, in you, take note of those words, all the families, all the families of the earth. He didn't say all the families of your nation. He said all the families of where? Of where? The earth. So God chose a man and was determined to use that man to achieve something in all the earth. Take note of that. All the earth. Now in this day, Israel was not the only nation on the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even Abraham was called out of a tribe. There were many nations. Africa existed there. You know, some people think Africa came maybe after Jesus. Where is God? Africa is so ancient, as ancient as human existence. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that's the problem. Because we don't keep our history, it doesn't mean we don't have a history. And also, because we, we didn't keep a history with God, it doesn't mean we don't have an history with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For example, Abraham, you know, you think God was only working with Abraham. But Abraham met a man called Abimelech, who was a man who was working with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? He was a king, yes. You remember he took Abraham's wife, because Abraham had said, she's my sister. And God visited him in the night and said, oh God, if you don't hand over this man. He said, but God now, how, look at this now. The man told me he's his sister. What wrong have I done? And God now says, because your heart is pure. If not, I would have dealt with you. <laughs> See, he had fellowship with God. That was not the first time God was appearing to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? If that was the first time, he would have run out of his house. <laughs> but because he had an interaction with God, he knew God the same way Abraham knew God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So there are many people who had walked, who walked with God. Job was another who was not of Abraham's kindred, but he was a man who walked with God. So I believe even in Africa, you had men who walked with God, but because they didn't write the Bible. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm going somewhere with this, and that's why I'm sharing this with you. So God made Abraham this promise and says, In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And guess what? When, when Isaac came, God made the same promise to Isaac. I think you find that in Genesis chapter 22. You also find that in Genesis chapter 26. God was always saying, look, in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Okay. Now, we go on. And let, let's look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Peter was preaching here. And verse 25. He was preaching here. And then he said, You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying to Abraham, And in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, it's amazing how you they still quote this and quote this and quote this and quote this. And they never forget this part where it says, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Because that was the promise God made with Abraham. Now, you know, the church got into talking about this. And guess what? You may have heard this. And they say, the, the promise God promised Abraham was Christ. Have you heard that before? 
Have you heard that before? That the promise God promised Abraham was Christ. But no, the promise God promised Abraham was not Christ. You know, I've heard it. You know, oh, God, uh, in, in God says, um, uh, I, I would, I would, uh, um, the, the Christ is the promise. So when they received the Holy Ghost, they received the promise that God promised Abraham. No, sir. Christ is not the promise. And that's why the church got stuck with Christ. They got stuck after they received Christ, thinking they have fulfilled the promise. No, Christ was not the fulfillment of the promise. The promise that was made to Abraham, I want you to follow me carefully. The promise that was made to Abraham was this. In I will bless you and I will bless your seed also. And then God says, in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Right? Okay. Then, Galatians lets us know that that seed, now from Galatians chapter 3, Galatians 3 lets us know that that seed is Christ. Are you following me? Are you following me? That seed is Christ. Now, he says, in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Right? And Galatians now tells us that that seed is not Isaac. That's what Galatians was trying to dispel. When he says, I will bless and I will bless your seed. He said, no, 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 that seed was not Isaac. Because now you see that even in Isaac, God still spoke about the seed. And it got to Jacob. Even Jacob, God still spoke about the seed. So the seed couldn't have been Isaac. So Galatians was trying to establish that now. Now he says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as, as of one and to your seed who is Christ. Are you following me? So Christ is the seed. But Christ is not the promise. Are you listening to me? So now God says, Christ is the seed. And God says, in your seed, all the families of the earth will be what? Blessed. Then, because I'm going to show you an argument here that, that Paul was trying to establish. And, and this is how a lot of people just take things and run with them and get into some confusing states. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me, let me, let, still Galatians. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's, let's start from, I'm just looking for a good place to start. Let's start from verse 8. Okay, 7. Let's start from verse, verse 7. We're going to read several scriptures. I want you to follow carefully. It says, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Next verse. And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. I want you to take note. What was the gospel that God preached to Abraham? Say there. What was the gospel God preached to Abraham? What was the gospel God preached to Abraham? In you, all the nations shall be blessed. Now that word nation is also what's translated families. Are you get what I'm saying? So the gospel God preached to Abraham was this. Very simple, straightforward um, gospel. Hey Abraham, look. This is what I'm going to do in you. All the families or all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Go on, next verse. Just keep that in mind. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Go on. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Next verse. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. We'll go back to this. Yet the law is not of faith but the man who does them shall live by them. Continue. 
Christ, follow this now, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, haven't become a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Now, naturally, it is evident that the blessing of Abraham must come upon the Gentiles. Why? Because the blessing says what? In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So it's just natural that as this thing is advancing, it must come on the Gentiles. Follow me now. Now, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant. Now, he comes here and he calls it covenant. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Take note of this. Here he says, brethren, Though it is only a man's covenant, meaning it's a covenant with a man. Are you get what I'm saying? It says, yet if it is confirmed, if the covenant is confirmed, no one can annul it. No one can add to it. So when two people make a covenant, they say, this is the, the agreement. Or, okay, are you get what I'm saying? This is the agreement. Now lawyers will understand this. This is the agreement of this covenant. And after writing that agreement, in every covenant, there is both parties, um, what's the word? Things that both parties will have to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, if they finish writing that covenant and none of the parties does the, do the things that they are supposed to do, that covenant is not holding, it's not binding. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's not binding. So, it might let something you can all be... Uh, something you're all used to you go rent a house okay now when you're renting a house from a landlord you enter into a covenant with the landlord you know that right now that covenant begin from your own part and what's your own part you pay the rent are you getting what i'm saying you pay the rent now if both of you have discussed and the man say look this is what i want in my house this is what i don't like in my house and you are okay with that you write in, I know some of you rent house without seeing any document. You just pay money and move into the house. You're in trouble. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> because tomorrow the landlord will not come and say, imagine you, you love dogs. So now you've entered the house. You now want to the landlord say, hey, 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 in my village, we don't like dogs. And if you bring dog into my house, even though he's not staying there, he's, he's seen as a cause. So because this house is my own, I'm sorry. He said, ah, but, but, but he didn't tell me he didn't say, uh, I'm telling you now. You know, that's why you now want to run to a lawyer. <laughs> Praise God. So before you move in, before you even pay, you're supposed to agree on the terms. Are you getting what I'm saying? I want to rent your house for this number of years. I want to be here one year, two years, whatever. So this man looks at you, checks you out, and he's okay with you. It's okay now. Let me tell you, this and this is okay. What's the agreement? They put, the lawyer puts the agreement. It's not after you pay, they bring agreements. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you pay for it. You say, I want to see the agreement. Your, your, your money may just go. <laughs> Before you pay, you're supposed to say, sorry, what's the agreement? You go through the agreement. You understand it. You take it to a lawyer. Please read this thing in case there's something I'm not seeing. Is there anything that is, will be off in this thing? The lawyer looks at it and says, oh, Perfect, it's good. So, okay, you come back to the land and say, Okay, I think I'm okay with it. Now, you're okay? Yes, I'm okay. So, are we good? The landlord look, has done his own background check. You know, here, they don't do all those things seriously. Landlord has done his own background check and it's okay with you. So, you say, Okay, fine, I'm good. Now, both of you have agreed to take the house and to give you the house, but it's not yet confirmed. It is only confirmed when you pay because the agreement is stated how much you will pay the moment you pay that and he receives the money that agreement have been confirmed and because it is confirmed no one can annul it that's what he's saying so 
when God made a covenant with Abraham, what was the covenant here? According to this blessing, remember what God says, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that word blessed actually simply means to be, within you, all the families of the earth will be taken care of. Taken care of. It's not blessed. I bless you. No. God, that blessing means, when God says, I will bless you, he's not saying I'll make you float on the air. He's not saying I'll make you shakalababa and be dancing and dancing. No. When God says, I will bless you, he's simply saying, I will take care of you. I will become responsible for you. That's simply what he means. So when God says, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed, he meant all the families of the earth shall be taken care of. Now, he made a promise to Abraham, but a day came when God showed up in the person of Melchizedek. I want you to follow me closely. He showed up in the person of Melchizedek and Abraham had just come from the war. And when Melchizedek met him, Melchizedek said, Abraham, let's get into a covenant. And the Bible said Melchizedek came with bread and wine. And then Abraham had, had all these goods. And that day, Melchizedek had a meeting with Abraham. And that was the day Melchizedek spoke to Abraham concerning Titan. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And then Melchizedek gave him bread and wine, symbolic of I from today. I'll be responsible for your life because you have obeyed my voice. And what was Abraham's part? Abraham gave him the, a tithe of all. That's what the Bible says. He gave him a tithe of all. Now give me that scripture again. Well, we just read in Galatians. What happened to our... Watch this. It says, Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one can annul it. That day when Abraham gave Melchizedek the tithes, right? And Melchizedek gave him what? The bread and wine. That was the day it became a covenant and it was confirmed on that day. Meaning this is a deal. It is sealed. In this man's seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Next verse. Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he does not say unto seeds as of many, but as of one unto seed who is Christ. Follow me now. Go on, next verse. And this I say that the law which was 420 years later cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God. See, see. And this I say that the law which was 430 years later, the law came 430 years after the covenant was made. Are you following what I'm saying? There was a promise, then there was a covenant, right? Now, after the covenant, there was a law. It says it cannot, the law, I want to follow, the law cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed be before by God in Christ that it should make the promise of non effect. When was it confirmed? When Abraham met Melchizedek. Are you following what I'm saying? That was when this covenant was confirmed or sealed and done with. So now he's saying the law came later. Paul was pushing an argument here. I get what I'm saying. For those people who insist on the law, he's telling them that look, this promise came before the law and the law cannot annul it. Because it was sealed and confirmed before the law came. Are you following what I'm saying? Now go on, next verse. Follow me now. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Next verse. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression. Remember, the law came 430 years later. God had made a promise to Abraham, right? And this promise is to take him somewhere. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the promise is also a prophecy. So the promise is supposed to take him on a journey somewhere. But then because of the way they were behaving, God being sure and being in his capacity to make sure he keeps his word, he had to introduce a law. What was the law supposed to do? He says, the law came because of what? Transgression. Because the way they were living their lives, they were going out of the way of fulfilling that promise. 
So God had to like, uh, 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 uh. this thing has been confirmed. I can't change it. So in order not to change it, I'm giving you a set of rules. These rules are to guide you so you don't step out of the way that I will not fulfill the promise that I made because it's now a covenant. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God took that responsibility and said, what purpose then does the Lord serve? It was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Did you see that? Did you see that? Till, say the law was added because of transgression. Till when? The seed should come to whom the promise was made. Now, so who was the promise made to? Huh? Who was the promise made to? The seed. The seed. And the seed is who? Christ. Are you seeing why I say that Christ is not the promise? Are you following me now? Now it says, till the seed comes. To whom the promise was, and it was appointed through the angel, angels by the hand of the mediator. Next verse. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. Go on. In the law, is the law then against the promise of God? Certainly not. For if there is a law, now go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. But the scripture I confirm on that is, but before faith, we're on that good. Watch. But before, no, give me this, this previous verse. But before faith came, we were kept under God by the law, kept for the faith which would afterwards be revealed. Next verse. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Remember, now, the law, the purpose of the law, God had to introduce the law for this reason. So these people don't go astray completely. Number two, the law became a guide. Hey, 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 hey. if you cross here, yeah, you're going wrong. If you cross here, you're going wrong. Stay in check. Stay in check. So yeah, yes, just keep going like that. Just keep going until you get to where? Until you get to where? Until you get to where? Christ. Until you get to Christ. Now, Christ came. And when Christ came, Christ signified the fulfillment of the promise. So in Christ, the beginning of the promise, the fulfillment of the promise began. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because in Christ now, truly, because Christ is not bound by any nation. Christ is not bound in, by, in the territory of the Jewish nation. So you see that after they got born again, God had to send Peter to go and meet Cornelius. And Peter went to the house of Cornelius and he was preaching. He didn't pray for them. While he was preaching, the Bible said the Holy Ghost came on them, right? The Holy Ghost came on them and they began to speak in other tongues. And God began to send them far to different nations. He was sending them. What was God doing? He was fulfilling the promise of Abraham. But that's not the fulfillment of the promise yet. That was the initiation into the promise. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God was setting his network all over the world. He was setting his network. See, one would call God a covenant-keeping God. You don't understand him. He doesn't keep covenant because you are, you are following and doing. He keeps covenant because that is who he is. So he, he is the one, even if you forget, he is the one that will still come and carry you and say, uh -uh, I made a covenant with your fathers that you didn't even know. Say, I don't know, you know, I don't know if I'm in the will of God. I don't know. I don't. Hey, he will see to it. He will see to it. So God began to set his network. Christ became the network of God to fulfill his promise. Yet Christ was not the promise. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So he began to set, he began to send them to different places. Now, why was he sending men to different places? Why didn't the Holy Ghost just start coming on men all over? He, he could have done that. But you see, because the promise carries an information, and that information was downloaded to a man. Are you following what I'm saying? So, Christ coming on people was not enough. 
they were to be informed that this thing that has happened to you is so that a covenant that was set can be fulfilled. Are you getting what I'm saying? The whole purpose of us being born again is for this reason. And there is no tribe, there is no limitation to tribe, no limitation to gender. Why? Because the promise from the beginning was clear. Every family of the earth. So God began to send men. He was sending men with the same gospel. You see, we have added a lot of things to the gospel. The gospel was very simple. Today, you know what we preach about the gospel? Jesus died for you, so give your life to Jesus. You see, God doesn't want you to go to hell. And, and, and he sent Jesus to die for you. And then you, he died, he is resurrected for your justification. So get saved, so that you will not go to hell. Do you know that is not the gospel? You're shocked you're shocked that's not the gospel we have been preaching a false gospel telling people that god does not want you to go to hell listen hell was not in view in the first place and you'll be shocked i said that was the last week i said that i said there are people in hell today that will not end up in the lake of fire the fact that somebody is held in hell today doesn't mean it's over no see there are people in hell today whose names are in the book of life do you know that do you know that yeah, because they didn't live according to God's plan. So when they die, I was told you this, when people die, it is the spirit of death that captures them out. And you understand what I'm saying? Now, those of them who have not lived according to faith, the spirit of death takes them and keeps them captive. And those who sinned, you know, those who just were followed just leaving the path of sin what happens to them hell takes captive of them and they are prisoners to hell but it's all to a season in that season read the bible in the book of revelation the bible say death gave up all the people it was holding hell hell to gave up all the people it was holding then that says death and hell were now cast into the lake of fire. Before they were cast into the lake of fire, you can read this yourself, they first of all emptied themselves. Where do you think they emptied them to? To the earth. So people who are in hell will come back to earth. People who are dead will come back to earth. You've never heard this before, right? <laughs> Go and read your Bible, praise God. They will come back to earth. And it's after they come back to earth, God will not do the saving of the earth. Anyone whose name is not found in the book of life. Don't say, eh, no, no, no. Those are people who did not get born again. There are people who died without even hearing the gospel. You know that, right? You know that, even till this day, there are people dying without hearing the gospel. That man, I just told you, will be preaching a false gospel. So imagine how many people have not heard the gospel. What's the gospel? Talk to me and I showed it to you. What's the gospel God preached to Abraham? Blessing. Blessing. And I said, that blessing is what? I want to be responsible for you. That was the original thing God planned from the beginning. So what he was doing in Abraham is nothing new. What he was doing in Abraham is so that he can carry out what he planned from the beginning. What do you think Jesus was doing when he came and said, take no thought for your life, what you will eat or clothes, what you will put on. He was trying to let you know that there is a covenant. God, it is God's responsibility. He even said, Con consider the beds. Did he say that? He said, consider the lilies. What do you think Jesus was trying to tell you? He was preparing us for the season of the fulfillment of the promise. God never created you to take care of yourself. Never. And that's the gospel. The gospel is not get born again so that you will avoid hell. The gospel is come into the fatherhood of God that he will take care of you. That's the gospel. And then he says, through us, we that have become Christ, we are now the ones through whom he will fulfill that promise. See, if you read down in, 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 in um, 
Galatians 3. He says, he says, hi, Kamalia. He says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. I think that's in, in verse 29 or so. Galatians chapter 3 or 26. He says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. So if you are Christ, meaning if you belong to Christ, you are that seed of Abraham. So the seed of Abraham is not one person. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Everyone who have come into Christ, you are the seed of Abraham. And then he now says, you are an heir according to the promise. Now when he says, he didn't say an heir to the promise. He said an heir. So in, according to that covenant, there is an heir. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now he says, that heir, wherever you see that heir in that covenant, you can put your name. If you are of Christ, you can put your name. So now, imagine your name is um, David. Okay? Your name is David. Then you come and look at that covenant. In you and your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That seed, that seed, you can remove that seed there and put your name. Did you get what I'm saying? Did you get what I'm saying? So how does that now work? Okay, now, my name is there. He says, in me, Atubo, all the families of the earth shall be taken care of. Now, what mentality is that giving you? What mentality is that giving you? That God says, in you, all the families of the earth will be taken care of. In you, all the families of the earth will be taken care of. In you, all the families of the earth will be taken care of. That's telling you that you have no business with poverty. That's telling you you have no business to just having for yourself and to live and, and, and take care of yourself. No. See, I know people, you know, uh, 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 the, Jesus, the, the, this prosperity, God, the whole gospel is breathing, speaking prosperity. See, the whole gospel, the gospel God came to preach to Abraham was this, in you and your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Uncle, auntie, tell me how that is possible without prosperity. Are you getting one? I know people have abused, people have turned the gospel into a self-seeking thing. You know, let me use it and enrich myself. But it does not negate the truth concerning the gospel. The gospel spells it out clearly. And it's, listen, you that is in Christ, he is telling you, have a world view. Have a world view. Don't just have a village view. Don't just have a street view. Have a world view. Why? In you, we are people of prophecy. There is a prophecy that was spoken that brought us in. We have heard the gospel. We have come into Christ. Brothers and sisters, now that we have come into Christ, we have an assignment. The journey begins now. What is that journey? To preach the gospel. What is the gospel? That the world, the whole world, every family of the earth will be blessed. That's the gospel. When he said blessed, not for them to receive the Holy Ghost. No! Praise God. The moment they receive the Holy Ghost, they have become an extension. Extension to what? That the blessing will come. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what? Now what's the connection with the Holy Ghost and the, the families of the earth to be taken care of? There must be a connection. Remember the covenant in the first place. He brought bread and wine, meaning I will take care of you. Remember the focus of Jesus' teaching. The focus of Jesus' teaching is prosperity. That's the focus. You know, I hear preachers, oh, Jesus only came to save your soul. He didn't come to, he didn't come to give you money. He didn't come to, he only came to save your soul. The same Jesus that told you, take no thought for your life. The same Jesus that told you all these things, the Gentiles of the world, the Gentiles are seeking. And your father knows that you have need of them. Then he tells you the clue. Seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. You know why? 
because they were ordained from the beginning you were supposed to be a flow you were supposed to be a channel from the beginning the, the whole thought of God is that you will be a channel through whom all the families of the earth will be blessed so Jesus said don't go seeking those things seek to stay in the place God wants you to be seek to flow in the place God wants you to flow he says all these things the Gentiles seek excuse me what does the Gentiles seek no talk to me let's be honest what does the Gentiles seek an unbeliever when he finishes school right he's looking for a job is he looking for a job to do community service what's he looking for a job for talk to me no how many of you here be honest with yourself you graduated from school and now you're going to start life and then you look for a job and then you find a job that's going to be paying you 500k a month and then you find a job that tells you that you know in this place the only thing we can give you is an accommodation we have a place you know they just come and help us you know help us how many of you will choose that one without hearing clearly from the <laughs> even when you hear clearly from god you fight small be honest with yourself who will go for that second one who because you feel this will do me better am i right am i right but hey that is how the gentiles think that is how they think the gentiles want better life right they want to have more money so that they can live better jesus said all these things they are seeking they are not good for you. is that what jesus said is that what jesus said he said all these things the gentiles seek leave it don't seek it like them you come seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness then all those things will be added why would they be added to you? There is a mission for it. What's the mission for it? To bless all the families of the earth. What's the mission for it? Nobody on your street should go hungry. Nobody on your street should go hungry. Nobody within your vicinity should go hungry. See, God had planned. This is the gospel. It's not hell. Say, some of me look at me and say, hey, they have come. They don't want to preach hell again. It never you know that's how the, 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 the whole purpose of Jesus was not hell it was not hell brothers and sisters it was not hell God is people minded God is concerned about taking care of people God is concerned about saving people and until this is fulfilled until this is fulfilled now this is the, I always this is the real purpose God instituted tithing do you know that this is the purpose he, this is the purpose he even added a law to tithing so you don't go astray concerning it why why because now everything you get god demands this i want 10 percent out of that thing now why did he demand for 10 percent per adventure you even get crazy he will still fulfill his promise why because he has money with you and that money what do you think he wants to use it for bless all the families of the earth are you understand what i'm saying that's why he made it a law so say, oh no uh, is is if you don't tithe you are stealing from god there is no two ways about it you are a thief are you understand what this has nothing to do with new testament or old testament you are stealing from god why are you stealing from god because god gave you that money because he's looking at what the families of the earth so when you don't submit it you are causing one to starve are you following what i'm saying and number two when you don't submit it properly when you don't submit it properly you're causing starvation in the earth that's what you're doing so you are working against the gospel so that's why, you know, when the Holy Ghost told me, they say, anyone who's against Titan is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. I didn't really understand what he was saying. But it's becoming clearer. Why? Because this is God's focus. And he set up an institution for generations. When he said, why did he walk with Abraham? He says, this one will command his children and his household after him. Now, I hear people say a lot of funny things. They say, eh, eh, all the titan you have been titan. How come the richest men in the world are, are unbelievers? Have you heard people talk like that? 
If you have people talk like that, they miss the point. They miss the point. Which are the richest families of the earth? Go check. When I say richest family, not today's money. Not today's money. If you want to know a blessed man, check three generations. Go and check people, wealthy people. Well, and you can only find out within families. Not one man, not one Elon Musk. Elon Musk dies today. His wealth is scattered abroad. It is over. Bill Gates dies today. Are you getting what I'm saying? His wealth is scattered. You hear them say, eh, I don't even have any, eh, what's it called? I, I told my daughter, I'm not willing anything. You hear, you hear them make all those statements. You think they are, they are only being modest. No, no. Because it's not blessed. It's not blessed. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That is the pattern of God. And truly, that inheritance is not money. But then when you hear these people make statements like this, it is confirming. They are by their words confirming that they are not blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when they are done, they vanish away. But the blessed man, they inherit the earth. So you see them families by families. Go check. Go check. It's something you can Google. Find out the richest family. Try to trace their history. You'll find Titan inside. Both Christians, uh, no, uh, when I say Christians, now not that they are born again. You see, because one thing you need to understand about Titan is a traditional thing. It's not a Christian thing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Israel, God deals with them by tradition. Not because of Christianity. So when I hear people say, hey, all of you Christians who are supporting Israel, hey, you better know that Israel's are not born again. You know, like, uh, God is not supporting them because they are born again. He's supporting them because they are his people. Traditionally, his people. They are the children of Abraham. And you see that land, that land, that land, God has marked it out for them. You dare not touch it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You dare not touch it. God will fight you. Why? Because he had a covenant with Abraham. He can never turn his back on it. If they like, they sin all they like. Anything the enemy is called, they say, Hey, God of our fathers! God steps in. He cannot not step in. He doesn't look at their sin at that time. He remembers the covenant he had with Abraham. When we tight, we are not even tithing because of Jesus. We are tithing because we understand the promise came from Abraham. Are you following what I'm saying? Now we came through Christ into that promise. Now as we have come into that, we have been connected. Connected for what? To carry on that blessing. If you don't carry on that blessing, then Christ is vain in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you're not part of seeing to it that this gospel is preached, what did Jesus say? This gospel shall be preached to all nations. What gospel do you think he was talking about? Jesus died for you, you know. And that's why the world is not changing. We are preaching, holding crusades, and calling people out for altar call. The world is not changing. Because here's the truth. They all come out. They get born again. They receive the Holy Ghost. They don't know what next. They don't know what next. So we tell them, try to live holy so that you will not enter hell. Try to live holy so that you will not enter hell. Then they try to live holy. For what purpose? What purpose? If you don't know the purpose, many people have lived so righteous and at a stage in their life, they are wondering whether this was worth it or whether they should regret it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You know why? They didn't understand the purpose. They didn't understand the purpose. We have preached. We have organized meetings. We have done large crusades. We have seen thousands of people come to Christ. But the evil in the world is still on. You still hear wickedness in the world. What, where are we going wrong? This is where we are going wrong. We're not preaching the gospel. We're not living the gospel. The gospel is clear. The gospel is clear. The first person the gospel was preached to was Abraham. Jesus came because of that gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Christ came because of that gospel. But now we receive Christ and we forget the gospel. And we start preaching another gospel. 
Hear me, brothers and sisters. It's time for the church to begin to correct its mindset. It's time for the church to begin to correct its mindset. Oh, are you saying that uh, uh, living righteous and holy is not? Hey, don't you understand? Don't you understand? See, walking, Jesus said it, seek the kingdom. Seek, what does it mean seek the kingdom? Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that takes you into the kingdom. When you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, then you will be preaching the gospel. You see, and you know when you begin to sin, you know you have problem with the Holy Ghost. You will. So it's not even, you're sinning, you're fornicating, you will go to hell. No, sir. No. Fornication will not take anybody to hell. I tell you, and when I mean hell, I'm talking final destruction. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? If you go to hell now, there's still hope for you. I'm telling you the truth. I will not lie because I want to stir people to live in a certain way. I will tell you the truth. You choose. But why don't we do those things? So that, it says, presenting yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I want to wake up every day and the Holy Spirit clearly tells me, hey, house 42, take these amounts of it from your tithes to them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, go to Suso Street and you will meet Suso and so person. Give them this, this. Why? And there you go. You know, yesterday, you know, my wife and it was, it was someone's, okay, we missed the person's birthday. You know, so uh, we called the person and we, we just prayed for the person and the person started telling me things. I'm like, ah. I said, you know what? Don't talk too much. I'll come and visit you. I just said, I'll come and visit you. So I said, okay. Um, I said, I'll come and visit you. I was supposed to visit the person yesterday. And then my wife said, ah, hold on. No. I actually promised this person I'll make a special soup for the person. So instead of going, why don't you wait? Let me make it. So we sent someone to the market to get the things that yesterday, but by the time everything was done, the soup was ready. <laughs> so that soup was ready around 10 p.m. <laughs> last night. Because my wife said, I have to make it. So I had to take it there today. I couldn't go yesterday. So today, I went to see the person with that bowl of soup. Then I entered the person's house. The person had a visitor. And then while I entered, I said, ah, Pastor, what are you carrying? I said, oh, it's from my wife. Oh, she made this soup for you. He said, oh! She took me inside. She called her friend. He said, what, were, what was I telling you last night about food? The friend said, ah, they were saying, that this is my house. You come, so there's no food, though. So better just wait. When uh, uh, the house have come back, anything we see, <laughs> we eat. And that's she not told the friend, say, see. <laughs> this thing happened this afternoon. Say, see. Food has come. They started rejoicing and rejoicing. That's how I want to live. Through you, all the families of the earth. It's not only money, brothers and sisters. It's not only money. God can tell you, take that shoe. Go and give to this person. And then you obey the Lord. And then you get there and you realize that I have an interview. Do you know I don't have shoes to wear? I've just been cracking my head. And God have answered now. To you, all the families. Are you getting, this is why we live clean. This is why we live pure. Why? We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. I want to be able to hear God. Not only my son, I'm going to show you mysteries. No, brothers and sisters, the whole purpose of the mysteries, are you get what I'm saying? Is that all the families of the earth be taken care of. Stand up on your feet. Do you understand what I just shared with you? Are you sure? Are you sure? Is it clear? Now you know your place. We're not just here, brothers and sisters. We are a people of prophecy. We are here to fulfill something. This is why Jesus came. This is why Christ came. This is why we hold these meetings. So that you will hear, go out and fulfill the promise of Abraham. Are you hear what I'm saying? Begin to pray. This is why we pray. This is why we pray. You wake up in the night, you're praying. You're praying for your neighborhood. You're praying for your environment. Why are you praying? Someone will receive the blessing of Abraham. And this is why you can never be poor. You can never be poor. You can never be poor. I pray that God will be increasing you step by step. 
Today, you may be giving people 5,000, 10,000, but God will increase you. That see, you will begin to pay people school fees in millions. God can speak to you. He says, that, that, I want you to go take care of that person. Pay their school fees. And then you get there and say, um, how are you doing? And, well, I don't know. God just laid it in my heart that I should take responsibility for the school fees of, of this child this year or this term. Say, wow, do you know we're praying and, and just asking God, what do we do? Through you. This is the gospel. Anything outside this is another gospel. I got bara de si tarunta bragi kasaya. Nege da bara kuta bena brenene. The nature of God is love. The nature of God has been love. That love makes him give to everyone. That's exactly what he wants us to do. When we say the nature of God, it's not just so that we'll be, we'll be speaking Chinese tongues and all that. No, that we extend his love. When we show up, someone knows that, do you know God just visited me? Because how did you know that I needed this thing? That's God's nature. That's God's nature. This thing is not rocket science. This is what the Holy Ghost is trying to achieve. The Holy Ghost is trying to achieve that even that child in Afghanistan, even that child is reached. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even those children, you know, when you watch all those movies, UN, you know, UN, UN, or, or uh, uh, what's it called, the children, part of UN. They like to show all those children, UN, UNICEF. They like to show, show all those children, Africa, in our suffering. God is concerned about them, all the families of the earth. It's not restricted whether they are saved or they are not saved. All. All means all. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I'm in. I'm in. Use me, Lord, to preach your gospel. Use me to preach the gospel. Use me to preach the gospel. Use me to preach the gospel, Lord. <laughs> Use me to preach the gospel. I want to preach the gospel. I want to preach the gospel. Use my hands. Use my legs. Everything that belongs to me, Lord, use it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, you have given your word. We take your word now and we leave it. We leave it. Let the earth know your nature and your character because you're extending your hands towards them. And that word by which you brought us in to fulfill is being fulfilled on the earth. All the families of the earth shall be blessed because of us, because of Christ. Christ is in us. Christ is in us. The world will get to know. The world will get to feel it. Christ is in us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Were you really, really blessed? Huh? Were you really blessed? Does anybody have a question? Praise God. Hallelujah. You're not used to that. <laughs> Praise God. Now, one of these days, we'll actually have question and answer um, meeting. The whole service will just be for question and answer. And I won't tell you before, so that you don't go and look for one question that does not have answer. See? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. But we're going to do that. It's, it's part of the things I like, I love to do. You know, I'm not afraid of questions. And it won't be scripted. I'll say, write a question and send it. No, ask it on the spot. The Holy Ghost is here to deal with it. Praise God. Hallelujah.